If you have completed the previous exercise, or if you have downloaded the zip file attached, you should have now a code with your validation. So in our login HTML, you should have the validation implemented, and you should have moved all the logic from your login controller to a new authorization factory service. And you will have a function create user, which will invoke the Firebase native create user function. Your sign up screen will have a, a nice uh, color change and the messages in case the user does not enter valid details. And if it does, when you focus on another field, it will become green. Otherwise, it will become red. So something you're already used to. What we want to do now is introduce the Firebase Hoof service in Angular. So instead of using the create user native function, we will use something different. But as I mentioned earlier, the refactoring will be straightforward. So the first thing we have to do is to inject the $Firebase Hoof service in our service. So $Firebase Hoof. And that's what we're going to do here as well. So after declaring our reference, we want to initialize the Firebase authentication. So I'll declare a new variable of, and it will be $Firebase of, and we will pass in our reference. Before doing anything else, let's take a look at this object. So console log fire off. If we go back to our application and we just refresh, we can open the console and we can take a look at this object. As you can see, all it returns are a set of functions that we can invoke that are exposed by the Firebase of service. The one we are interested in is the dollar create user, which does exactly what we did in the previous lectures. So if we go back again to our code, we can refactor everything to use the new service. Let's start modifying the auth factory create user function. The first thing we have to do is to rename the reference in off because that's the service we want to invoke and we want to add a dollar in front of the function we're invoking. We won't be processing the error and the user data as part of the second parameter, but we will close our brackets straight after invoking the create user function and we will remove all of this. So far so good, we have removed everything, but we're going to reuse it again. The create user function returns a promise. So what we want to do is to return this promise to the caller, which is our login controller JS. If we open our login controller, we'll have again our function. And what we want to do afterwards is just assign the result of this function to a new variable. So we do bar result equals our function. And then we want to test the promise that comes out of the result. So it will be result dot then. And the first parameter we'll get back is the success promise. So it will be a function that provides the user data. And then we will have a function in case of error. The implementation for our user data function is the following. So we will open our brackets and we will just log the user data dot UID. And if we want to have a similar message to the one we have before, we can just type user successfully, successfully created with UID. And we concatenate the UID that we get back. And in case of error, we want to console.log an error occurred. And then we will show the error. That's it. If everything we did is correct, our refactory is completed and we can just test it. Go back again to our application. Let's see what happens now. We'll click on sign up here. We'll try to register a user that already exists, the one I've created in the first lecture of this section. And as you can see, I can still see my error. And if I create a new user, maybe add an A at the end, I can see that the user has been successfully created. So we're using now the Angular Fire service and our implementation for the sign up function is now complete. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at what we can do in order to allow a user to log in into our application.